All right, all right, welcome back to this channel. My name is Salvador Brigman, and in this video, we are talking about how to actually set a Kickstarter funding goal. So on this channel, I talk about a lot of different stuff, but I would say if we had to condense it, it's really about helping you reach your full potential as a creator, as an inventor, as a business owner, as someone who's an artist, as someone who's trying to really make an impact on the world, and maybe that's even in a cause-related endeavor for a nonprofit, et cetera. I try to help you reach your full potential by sharing actionable tips, advice, strategy, got my podcast as well, so you can hear from incredibly successful successful campaign creators every single week that are raising money. And that's really my goal at the end of the day is helping you make an impact on the world with ethically dominate your category. So that way, someday we can actually have your product maybe existing and someone else using it. And you can actually see that, which is kind of cool. It's called a product in the wild. So in today's video, I want to talk about this really setting the Kickstarter campaign funding goal, how to go about that. It's a little bit of an art, a little bit of a science. So I'm going to be getting into that today and really sharing that information. And if you want your question answered. I'm telling you, we've been getting so many comments on my YouTube videos. I love it, you guys. Thank you so much for all the incredible support. Um, I think if you want to reach me directly, the easiest way is to go to my website, crowdcrux.com. That's crowdcrux, C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com kind of like the crux of crowdfunding if you want to do it that way. Uh, and you can go to my about section, you can shoot me an email there and you might get your email, your question featured on one of my videos. So that being said, let's dive into this video. Let's get right to it. And it's coming up right after this. So I got to start this video by saying something that I have been seeing the comments, guys. I have been seeing the news pouring in the fact that I sometimes talk a little bit quickly. And maybe that's because I was living in New York City for six years. And ever since I came here, living now in Miami, people are like, gosh, why do you talk so fast, right? Sometimes it just kind of rubs off on you, right? But also I get excited. It's something that specifically when it comes to setting your Kickstarter funding goal, this can literally make or break your campaign and you're launching something new into the world. You're raising money maybe for a comic book, a card game, a physical product, a gadget, a gizmo. It could be a new book, what you're writing. It could be a theater project, it could be a film campaign, whatever it is, you're getting something out there for the first time so that you can actually impact the world for the positive. You have tons of people out there actually experience this product. So it's an exciting experience, right? Setting the funding goal is one of those things that is a little bit of a marketing exercise. So I never really understood what that meant, but uh, I would say that for me, when I was a lot younger, uh, when I first actually graduated from college, I wrote this logistic thesis comparing the different categories categories on Kickstarter. So this is a logistic regression comparing the different categories. So I was doing this for my econ degree in college and I started to publish some of my findings online. And lo and behold, people actually started to discover this. And I never, you know, in my wildest dreams, imagined I'd be able to say this, but I actually started to get cited on major media publications like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Forbes, uh, the Washingtonian, Indiegogo's blog, Hypebot. There's like all these different media publications that start to write about my findings, my advice, my tips, my techniques, because they were so radically different than what was being shared out there and it's all based in data. So what I realized is that when you actually have an online presence and you put out content, whether that's a campaign or even some findings or update or social media posts, people around the globe can discover that information. And it's really what we call marketing. So in you launching this campaign, you might think that no one's gonna see this, but actually there are gonna be thousands of people around the world that are going to to see what you set as your funding goal, what you set in terms of your fundraising duration, in terms of your campaign page, in terms of your video. You're a public, you're on the public stage, you're like a gladiator, and you're actually now in the arena when it comes to this. So when I say that setting a funding goal is really a marketing exercise, what I mean is that in many ways, it's about perception. There are two camps here. One is a very product focused engineering individual who's very big into the numbers, very big into the design, the technology of the product. Another is more of a creative or a marketer, okay? Someone who's actually thinking more about how other people are viewing that particular experience when it comes to the product, which is kind of more my role, right? When it comes to helping people launch campaigns. So from more of the product and logistics side, the engineering side, you might be thinking, okay, we need to raise this exact amount of money in order to fulfill a minimum quantity order to pay for, let's just say the plastic, you know, the product's made out of plastic, injection molding costs or the technology to manufacture this particular product. We need this amount of money. If we don't raise this amount, it's not gonna be successful. The problem with this approach is that it doesn't take into account the fact that there is an algorithm that chooses whether or not you rank when it comes to the Kickstarter ranking platform. And if you trigger that algorithm and you actually start to trend well in the charge, you can get tons of people backing your campaign and supporting your effort 
if you trend well in that algorithm. Now, the key to trending well in this algorithm, I actually covered in an extensive other video. It's called the velocity of funding. You can check out my other YouTube video on that or some of my other content. But setting the funding goal is much more about creating a balance between what you need to execute the project and what you need in order to uh, actually hit that particular ranking algorithm. So there is a little bit of a science to this. That being said, you do want to make sure that if you are obviously trying to fund a campaign, you can deliver on your promises. So I'll give you a couple of different options. One is that you decide I'm going to set a very low funding goal with just the, the objective of trying to hit that quickly so I can start to trend in the charts. I have a lot of students who will book a coaching call with me and they'll start to research similar campaigns. They're like, oh my gosh, Sal, all these people are setting very low funding goals. And also they're overfunding their campaign by almost 5x to 10x. There's something that's happening here, and that's exactly right. So there's a lot more that's happening behind the scenes than just that, and we can talk about that privately if you want to. But I would say that for the general public out there, you should notice this trend. Take a look at a couple of other example campaigns. How much are they funding versus what was their specific funding goal? It's going to vary from category to category, but you want to use that as a benchmark of what you should set when it comes to your goal. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fifflerite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillright today. Link in the description. So immediately, I always get the question, right? Which is like, oh my gosh, Sal. Okay, so what if I had set a low funding goal and I am able to hit it and raise that money successfully, but I still have inventory left over after this campaign is done because I got to obviously get a minimum order quantity from the factory. And there's a lot of different ways in which you can address this. The first is that if you really want to, up until the last day of the campaign, you can technically cancel it and you have no obligation to actually fulfill your rewards and even move forward with the project. So if you wanted to, you could cancel it, right? If it doesn't go your way. The second is you would just have extra inventory, which you continue to sell on a platform like Indiegogo in demand or using a pledge manager tool, or then you can start your Shopify store. I'd say the vast majority of my successful clients that end up doing a campaign end up doing a Shopify store or selling on Amazon or something like that, right? So you still have inventory, which you can just sell out. It might just take you a little bit longer, but you already have indication of demand. You've already validated that. You already have a customer base now. So it's a lot easier for you then to kind of de-risk that versus just going all in and buying a bunch of inventory and having no way to sell that from the get-go. That's way more risky in my opinion. The next question that I usually get is, oh my gosh, Sal, what ends up happening is if like I set this low funding goal and it goes really well and I'm raising actually a lot more than I thought and for some reason I'm going to have to maybe do even another order from the factory, right? And what happens if certain orders are delayed within the consumer base, right? When it comes to the actual backers. So this is technically another problem and I would say when it comes to delivering you typically have between, you know, one to four months to actually deliver the product and then you probably have to continue to explain where the delay is happening. But it's okay. A Kickstarter backer is is different from an e-commerce buyer. They're not expecting you to ship it like Amazon in two to three days, right? Or business days when it comes to that. These are people that are supporting the creation of the product. So in my mind, this is not really a problem. This is a high quality problem to have. And at that point, you've already raised the funding and you can actually solve and deal with this problem as you go. The skinny of it is you want to set as low a funding goal as possible which allows you to execute the campaign, allows you to actually deliver, right, to get your product into other people's hands, but that also is in line with your own research and it makes sense from a marketing angle. You don't wanna be the one who's setting the highest possible goal that's impossible to hit and you're only gonna slowly inch towards that goal over 30 days. Instead, I would rather you set a low goal hit it quickly, maybe the first day, first three days, even the first week, trend well on the charts, right? And become overfunded as a result. And then you can kind of solve those problems as you're going. Of course, you gotta play it right by the backers. You gotta make sure you're running an ethical campaign and you're getting a product out there in the most ethical means possible. But that would be my thought when it comes to balancing logistics and the product creation side and also the marketing side.
If you wanna go more in depth into this topic and also talk more about how to rank well within the actual Kickstarter marketplace, the entire marketing, driving traffic, getting pledges very early on in the process, and as well, how do you continue to promote the heck out of this? How do you get PR and media attention? And you really want an individualized approach and you are ready to speed up this process, to put this on turbocharge, on light speed. You wanna get the right information and you wanna get it now. You can book an intensive coaching call with me at the link down below. I'm telling you, People walk out of these calls with tremendous levels of confidence going into their campaign launch because not only do we talk about everything you need to do every step of the way and kind of where the gaps are, and sometimes you just don't know what you don't know, but I also introduce you to other tools, resources in the industry which you probably don't even know about. I tell you about things that are happening behind the scenes that will blow your mind. And in addition for some select students, some ones that I really relate with or that we think we have a really good chance when it comes to their product, we might also agree to work with you in helping you launch that campaign from an agency capacity. So if you wanna learn more about that option, all you gotta do is fill out this form, tell me a little bit more of information about you, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to achieve, how much you're trying to raise, uh, tell me where you are in the world, would love to connect with you, and go to that link down below at crowdcrux.com slash coaching, fill out that information, do that as soon as possible when you are ready to actually get this sucker out there or even in the early stages. I can have a profound effect on your golf swing. If you think about your golf swing, I can have a profound effect, even just a little bit of a difference when it comes to that adjustment of a club or in this case, the adjustment of the strategy can have a huge effect on the ball or in this case, on the results further down the road. So the earlier that we get started, the easier it will be to make sure we have a good effect when it comes to your campaign. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, my name is Salvador Braverman. Got a lot of great content coming out in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up, leave a positive and encouraging comment down below, and I will see you next time.